I'm going to create a cube and I'm going to press F to zoom in on. So here's my cube and it has a very simple topological layout. It's got one polygon face per side. If I was to hit three on this, it turns into a rounded shape. It's trying to interpolate between all of the vertices corners and it rounds out the shape. So how would I keep it so that some of these corners are sharp and some of them are round? Well, I can use my good friend, the multi-cut tool. So let's go back over to my modeling tool shelf here. Here's my multi-cut tool. And if I was to put a cut running all the way around the near the top here, and I'm going to do that by holding the control key down. If I put a cut in here and I was to hit the three key, you'll see that it rounds off only the bottom now, but it's starting to hold up the shape at the top. So I'm going to hit one again. And if I was to put in another cut by holding the control key and I'm going to hold up this corner right here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'll put a cut just over there and I hit three. Now it's starting to hold up those verticals running into this corner here. And we're getting a sharper corner here, but it's still quite rounded at the bottom. So that gives me a lot of control. Now let's try the following. I'm going to go to, I'm going to hit W. I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm going to, and I could do that over here as well. And I'm going to double click this edge and it selects the loop the entire way around. So that's very, very handy. I don't have to do the following. I don't have to click here and then hold shift and click all and then orbit all the way around and click, click, click. That would be way too much work because I'm using all quads. M Maya will follow along this edge as far as it can. So it will traverse these edges and it's able to do that. Uh, fairly consistently and in a logical way because I'm using quads and that is one of the main reasons to try and use quads when we model Because these tools are designed to be consistent when using quads That doesn't mean you can't use triangles and n-gons It just means that our workflow our workflow will be easier if we use quads So I double click and it selects the entire way around If I hit one on the keyboard, I see the the low poly version if you want to think of it that way If I hit three, I see the subdivided version if I hit two I can see, I see the lower poly model in wireframe and the higher poly model in smooth shaded. And that's useful because I can tell where exactly my edges are. I just want you to watch the smoothed model as I move this edge further away from this top edge. So it starts to round out that shape. And watch what happens as I move it closer to the top edge. We start to get a sharper corner it's not as sharp as the original, still rounded out a bit, but it's definitely sharper than before. So the closer these vertices are together, the sharper the corner we get when Maya does the subdivision interpolation of these points. The further away these two vertices are, when Maya tries to interpolate between the vertices, we get a more rounded shape. And that gives us quite a lot of control. So I'm just going to put this cut in here quite close to the edge. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to move this guy out a little bit further. And I can move this guy out a little bit further that way. I'm going to put in one more cut running just across here. So I'm going to go back to my multi-cut tool. I'm going to hold the control key. I'm going to put a cut in just here. Now that is holding up all that is holding up this edge in all directions. And I want you to just note the shape that we get here. I'm going to hit W and I'm going to hit one just to go back to our low poly shape. And just when we look at this shape here, we can see it's almost like a little cube within a larger cube. And that means I'm holding up all directions. I'm holding up this direction here, this one on the top, here on the side, on this side, and going down this way. So that's really the most amount of edges I need to put in here to hold up this shape. And you can see that it's mirrored it on the other side because the loops go the entire way around. Okay, so I want you to practice that because that's going to be quite important as we move towards uh, as we move towards finishing the fork. We'll want some parts to be sharp and some parts to be soft, and this is the way to go about achieving that. If I just turn off wireframe unshaded for a second, we can see that we get this nice beveled type edge. Uh, we had a very sharp CG looking box to start off with, and this is starting to look more like real life because. In real life, we always have some kind of edge. We don't get these very sharp edges. Even something as sharp as a knife or something like that will have an edge if we zoom in close enough to it. So to mirror that, we 
have to put in some extra detail, which is these extra faces here. Now, keep in mind our mantra that I said at the start of this video, which is I want to use the least amount of polygons possible. So I'm only going to put in these supporting edge loops at the very end of the process because I don't want to have to manage them. I'm going to delete that now. I'm going to bring back up my fork. So if I hit three here and hit one, three, you can see that this has gone really, really soft. So let's try putting in a supporting edge loop just here. And I'm just going to put in one or two just to, to, to show the process. I'm going to save all the rest of the supporting edge loops towards the very end of the process because I don't want to have to manage all those extra polygons. But I am going to put in a cut just here now just to demonstrate. So I'm going to go back over to my multi-cut tool. I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to put a loop going that way. And let's see what that looks like. And that's holding up that edge a little bit better there. I'm going to put another loop running around here and let's see what that looks like that's holding it up a lot better so that is starting to hold up that shape a little bit better now it's still a bit too soft but it's fine for just now i could in theory do the same thing up here to try and sharpen up some of these edges but like i said i want to wait until the very end to do all that so that's a good example of how we can hold up some of our edges to be sharper or softer.